menstrual circle experience has been a big challenge among ladies from the rural and urban areas who can't afford sanitary pads. I Care Foundation therefore came up with a special pads known as care pads that can be used for a period of one year. They are recyclable since they can be used, washed and used again. I had a privilege to visit iCare Foundation offices and this is what Angelina, the founder and CEO of Single Mothers Association and iCare Foundation had to say. Okay. My name is Angelina Okwe Anandwa. I'm the founder and the project director of the Single Mothers Association of Kenya, which was formed in 1991 as a youth guidance and counseling center. Mm -hmm. So, um, please tell us a brief history or introduction about how it started. Okay. Yeah, we started as a youth guidance and counseling center. And I'm um, the one who started after having undergone some training, which was sponsored by the former Family Planning Association of Kenya. And as yes, you are aware, once you have been funded by the donor, they always look forward to see how you are going to share the knowledge acquired. So you are supposed to go back to your community and uh, come up with a program. So this is a community where I was born and brought up and even married. Although when, uh, when you during training, they tell you that before you start a program in a community, you have to carry out a feasibility study. But because I belong and the community is too small, there was no need for me to carry out a feasibility study because the biggest problem in this community is teenage pregnancy, alcoholism and drug abuse and uh, drug peddling because most of the families here were initially were depending on brewing and selling of traditional liquor, which is younger. And then, you know, that, uh, that was one of the cause of teenage pregnancy and uh, alcoholism. Yeah, so I decided to come up with a program for the girls because for the boys, the, for the boys, the only way you can reach the boys is through sporting activities. And, you know, with sporting, sporting equipments are too expensive. So we wanted a project with, which can start with small amount. So we started for the girls because at least for the girls, is, the girls you can manage them. So we started something like a merry-go-round. And uh, my main target of interest was single adolescent mothers. And the youngest mother we had was, uh, was 12 years old. And uh, I, I managed to mobilize 50 single young mothers. And we started like a merry-go-round. And uh, through merry-go-round, we were also referring them for t more trainings to come and assist in the community work. And that is now the time we came up, we decided to come up with a, with a uh, youth guidance and counseling center because we, d we identified that young people had a lot of problems and they feared sharing with the, with the adult. So they needed people of their age they could share with. Yeah. Mm. So what could you say motivated you towards starting this organization? Yeah, in fact, I was motivated to start this organization because before I was trained by Family Planning Association of Kenya, uh, I was, I, I was, uh, I don't know if I could call myself a victim or what of a uh, forced marriage because like uh, when I was in Form 2, my parents forced me to marry a man I didn't know, a stranger, yeah? And uh, I stayed in that marriage for, four, for five years, but it never came true. I couldn't cope with the marriage because this, this was a, a, a very old person who was almost 20 years, 20 years more, more than, you know, my age. And also this was uh, somebody who had married earlier and then separated. And he also had children who were somewhat even older than me. So it became very difficult for me to cope in that marriage because like uh, the way they were handling me, it was like he was just looking for a house girl, somebody to care for, for his children. So I, dis I, I decided to come out of that marriage. And it was not easy because like, you know, with the parents, you know, during our days, we, uh, we belonged to the community. And we had a lot of respect to our parents that anything your parents says, you, you know, we really feared to curses. So we, we, we had to give in in whatever situation. So I decided one morning, I said, no, it is my life. I decided to come back home and I told my parents, I'm not seeing that marriage working. 
and I've decided to come out of it. Yeah, so it wasn't easy because like um, I had a lot of, you know, I had a lot of, uh, you know, I was depressed. Yeah. yeah, I was so much depressed and the only the only place I could get maybe comfort is through joining a, a, a youth group, you know, where I could get people of my age to share with. And you know, that's the time now I was identified by the Family Planning Association of Kenya, and they felt that if I was given more training, I could be more useful to the community and share my personal experience with other young mothers. Yeah. So how did the idea of I Care Parts organization come into being for that matter? In fact, I care. I care parts. I have a I have a friend of mine from the Netherlands, and the I care is a is a Netherlands funded project. Yeah, this is a project which was started by Capos. Uh, the uh, the the husband is a, an engineer, so they, they when they came to Kenya, they decided to come up with a, a project for the slum people in Kisumu, slum boys and girls in Kisumu. So they, they, they came up with a, uh, with a mechanical training school for the boys and then for these, these are other you know, mothers who are positive and who have been neglected, who have been disowned by their, their, their families. So they decided to start at least something for the, the ladies. So now the ladies are the ones who are making the, the parts but the boys are doing mechanical engineering. The owner of the eye care part company is a friend to uh, my friend from the Netherlands. So she's the one who approached me and told me if I can, if I can help them, uh, you know, help, you know, if I can help them to sell the parts. Yeah, and that is how I came in. So um, I don't work for them, they don't pay me, but I'm just an ambassador of sanitary parts because I have passion for girls. Yeah, so in other words, it's I'm just promoting them. Yeah, it's an NGO organization. Yeah, it's an NGO. In fact, it, it even, it is registered locally here in Kenya and it has it, it is all, it has also its uh, its own registration certificate and it ha it has its trademark in fact this is its trademark yeah registered under Kenya Bureau of Standards so it is a bureau of standard yeah so um, are there any challenges you faced since then yeah there are so many challenges because uh, like i've been trying to sell locally like uh, in Nairobi it becomes very difficult for city girls. You know, city girls like easy, easy things. They, you know, when, when you tell them that they are supposed to wash and use again, they say they cannot. So there is a big challenge for urban, urban girls to accept the sanitary towels, unless if they are, in, they are in the slums. Because I've been trying even in schools, urban schools, it has become very difficult. But at least I'm selling a lot in uh, rural schools. Yeah. Mm. So, um, Say, uh, maybe those who are in the city they mm. don't have much challenge in buying parts monthly. So mm. perhaps those people far in the within the remote areas, mm. they do. I understand they do have challenges. Some of them mm. miss schools when they are on periods mm. because they don't because they shy of. Yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah, uh -huh, uh -huh, yeah. And others use an hygienic clothes mm. like yeah, yeah, they mm. cut some piece of. Yeah, yeah, yeah old use clothes them. they yeah. use them. So yeah. what have you done to ensure that you reach those people in the remote? areas in fact what have been done not not everybody in the urban can afford it's only that you know peer peer pressure because like you cannot afford that but because she can afford so you want also to be seen that you can afford you don't want to be seen that you you cannot afford yeah, because I know so many even in the urban cannot afford, but it's just because of that attitude, you know, yeah. But uh, we, uh, in fact, I've really sold a lot. But my challenge is how to reach those schools, because, you know, like the I care, they don't pay me. Yeah, they don't pay me, and unless they support me to reach those people, it becomes very difficult for me to reach those people. But at least I've been able to reach Embu. Uh, we have been able to go to um, Isinya. There is a, a, a group in Isinya, and uh, maybe God willing, in January, there is a group which is buying almost a thousand uh, in Kajiado. So the problem is reaching these areas. You know, if, if they were funding me to reach these areas, I could be reaching them, but because they are not funding me, unless those people in those schools invite me, and if they invite me, they have to cutter for my transport. 
Yeah, they have to cater for my transport. Because even you remember the other day we had that coverage at Citizen, where this Mweshimua, this lady was talking about them using the mattresses and their old clothes. In fact, that thing really touched me. And I even wrote to them officially and requested them if they could allow me bring, if they